Now we know which teams have talked the talk, but now it's time to see which teams actually walk the walk. What's going down everyone? This is John Ammo. Welcome back to the archives. And this is a special uh, regular, se regular season get ready edition. The, the preseason's over. You know, last year's Pro Bowl is over. Your team with the big playoff run, you know, that's over too. Um, and we all know what we should be able to expect out of our teams after we saw them this preseason. So, you know, going over Philadelphia Eagles preseason, I saw a lot of good things from a lot of good people out there. And uh, I'm thoroughly convinced that we'll win 11 or 12 games. I'm thinking we'll go 11 and 5. Um, the only way the Philadelphia Eagles are not going to win the NFC East is if the Dallas Cowboys repeat their performance from last year and they go 13 and 3. I don't really see that happening. Uh, not hating on the Cowboys, but I really don't think that they can sustain you know a 13 and 3 record two years in a row. No, no team can really do that. I don't even think the Patriots are going to you know be 13 and 3 this year. If you want me to be honest with you, but especially the Dallas Cowboys, that they're not the New England Patriots, so. Uh, and the New York Giants, you know, they're having a lot of problems. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, Redskins had a good, you know, a lucky run last year. So I'm really, really honestly thinking the Eagles can win it with an 11 or, or 12 win uh, performance out there. Um, going over the preseason, we went 2-2. Two and two. That really doesn't matter. Um, you know, if our first, team play, first teams played, I think we would have won all four games. We, you know, we beat the Patriots pretty damn good. Uh, and, and that being said, the Patriots played their first team, um, uh, I think the whole entire first half, minus Tom Brady, of course, because they were playing like such shit, and Bill Belichick was so pissed off that, uh, you know, Kevin Kolb and the second team actually moved, moved down for a touchdown, or actually uh, moved them down for a field goal drive, their first, his first drive out there. Um, you know, that being said... It doesn't matter the actual wins or losses in the preseason. It just matters how, you know, more or less the first teams play and some of the backups play as well. Uh, going, at, going into that, our team leader and captain, Donovan McNabb, obviously he's back. Scouts are saying big things about McNabb. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen after this year. He, this might be his last year. It all comes down to, you know, I'm sure if he wins the Super Bowl and, and brings home a title, you know, we're obviously going to re-sign Donovan McNabb, so it, it all comes down to this year, but that being said, this is the first year he's 100% healthy in, in a few years. He looks great, you know, he's moving around in the pocket, he's leading the teams to either field goals or um, touchdowns on almost every drive, so I'm excited that he's back. Uh, you know, we, we live and die with number five, I believe he's going back to the Pro Bowl this year, and I believe he can finally win the Super Bowl and uh, we'll talk contract next year. Uh, running backs, and then Kevin Cole, wow. Uh, he played outstanding in the last game against the Jets. Um, you know, he played really well against the Patriots. This kid has come a long way. I'm really excited to see where he's going to go in the next five years. Uh, that being said, again, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with Donovan, but if Donovan does bring home a Super Bowl title, I can't, I can't see that we wouldn't re-sign him. So it, it all, it all, it's all up in the air, and we'll have to see. So... Uh, running back situation, obviously, Brian Westbrook, we don't really have to say much about him. He's uh, going to be the, the game breaker that, that he always is. Hopefully he can lead the NFC this year in rushing. Um, uh, Lorenzo Booker and uh, Corel Buckholter. Buckholter's never looked better. He had a great preseason. Lorenzo Booker had an outstanding preseason, played very well against the uh, against the um, Steelers and against the Jets and against the Patriots. So uh, running back situation is looking really good. Wide receivers, a uh, little concerned about Kevin Curtis. You know, he definitely is a, ga uh, is a game changer. He's obviously not a number one receiver, but he's a very good number two receiver. You're taking a thousand yard producer out of the lineup. Uh, hopefully, you know, we can plug in Deshaun Jackson, who had an amazing you know preseason this kid number 10 is going to be the shit this year he's already returned you know a punt for a touchdown along with uh, Demps as well so we'll get on to the uh, kicking return game in a second uh, the special special teams but uh, Deshaun Jackson hopefully can step in and become that 
number one wide receiver. You know, if he reminds me a little bit of Steve Smith, so he, as far as his build goes and as far as his ability to break tackles and, and you know, accelerate downfield. So we'll have to see what this kid can do. But they're saying a lot of big things about this kid, Deshaun Jackson. So, you know, pick him high in your fantasy squads, too. And uh, Reggie Brown hopefully will be ready for the start. Um, you know, Hank Basket and Greg Lewis, again, they're viable alternatives. We have to make do with what we got, and that's what we got. So hopefully next year we'll bring home that number one receiver. But you never know. We might not need it, depending on Deshaun Jackson. Um, offensive line, outstanding. Jimenez, uh, Jamal Jackson, um, Winston, uh, Just, uh, Winston Justice came, came along uh, lo a long way in the backup role. Obviously, Sean Andrews. Uh, John Runyon and, and Trey Thomas, uh, you know, we're looking, obviously we have pro bowlers at every position up front. That's not really an issue. Uh, defensive end spot is looking pretty good as well. Uh, and and uh, saying on to that really quick, McDougal. We have to sign McDougal. I mean, this guy, I, I know, you know, we drafted him in 03, you know, in the first round. I know he's never lived up to his potential. This guy out of all had the best uh, preseason out of all defenders. So uh, he 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 had I don't even know how many sacks. He had forced fumbles. He was a he has he was a presence in every single game. Got to resign McDougal. Uh, Clemens is still not around, but I'm sure he'll play a big a big uh, a big role in a situational you know position. Uh, Trent Cole you know a, a stud. He had a great preseason uh, along with uh, uh, Parker on the ends and then. You know, Patterson and Bunkley in the middle were looking good at the, at the line. Linebackers, uh, the kid, um, Mays, Joey Mays, is that his name? This He, he led the uh, preseason for the Philadelphia Eagles in tackles this year. I was very, very impressed with this kid. I was very impressed with this kid. Um, he was all over the field, uh, and he's in the middle linebacker spot, so... You know, they better not look over their shoulder. Stuart Bradley better not look over his shoulder because uh, Joe, Joey Mays might might be able to step in and, and actually take the starting role as far as his preseason went. He played phenomenal. Go Kong played great. Uh, Gaither played great. Uh, our cornerbacks, you know, Asante Samuel stepped up when he needed to. Sheldon Brown, Lito Shepard. It doesn't look like there's going to be any controversy there. Um, it looks like, you know, they're adapting to each other pretty well. They're all getting a lot of snaps. Uh, Quentin Michael, you know, he had a great preseason along with uh, Brian Dawkins, who a lot of people are saying he's not a blue chipper anymore. A lot of people are saying, you know, B. Dawk has lost a step, but I disagree. I think, uh, you know, he'll step up this year. I think last year, you know, our, our whole secondary was a little bit beaten up. So that being said, you know, I'm looking for the Philadelphia Eagles to win 11 or 12 games this year. No problem with that. I'm looking for the New York Giants to fall big time. Uh, I don't think they're going to even go 500. As you know, uh, they lost OC for the entire season. That's a huge loss. Uh, they're still okay. They got the young kid, uh, forgot his name, Beck or something like that. Or um, you know, Strahan is not coming back, so that's going to you know be a little bit of a problem for them. And I think Michael Strahan made the right decision, a la Brett Favre. Uh, you know, he didn't want to come back and embarrass himself. He's not in game game shape right now. So I'm only thinking. You know, maybe seven and nine or six and ten for the G-men this year. It's going to be a, a, a rough fall. Uh, Cowboys, honestly, it's going to be hit or miss with them. I don't think that they can win. You know, 13, 14, 12 games again. I think realistically they're going to win 10 games. I think they're going to be neck and neck with the Eagles, and I think the Eagles are going to are, are going to be in the end of the better football team. But you know, who knows? If not, if they do win 13 games again, then you know. Possibly the Eagles will be right behind them, but I both I see them probably both going to the playoffs. If not, the Cowboys could fall off, possibly seven and nine or eight and eight. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. It was an exciting preseason. The time for talking is over. Uh, you know, the the Pro Bowl, the 13 Pro Bowlers mean nothing. Your Super Bowl run last year means nothing. Your nine and seven record last year means nothing. Just because those things happened last year does not necessarily equate to them meeting happening this year. I'm looking forward to the Philadelphia Eagles winning 11 or 12 games, wrapping up the NFC East, and Donovan McNabb taking home the uh, Super Bowl. John Amell, the Archives, I'm out.